Hi everyone, I look like a hobo today, but you know what? Compared to what I have felt like, uh, I feel like a million bucks. I really don't care what I look like at this point. Um, but I just wanted to get on here and uh, give you an update, tell you where I'm at. Um, so I had my very first treatment on Thursday. I had uh, Taxil, uh, Herceptin, and Pergetta, which... Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about that, but um, basically that's just my concoction um, that they made up for me. So everybody's chemo is going to be different. Um, so here I am. So I had treatment Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Today is it's Monday morning. I'm finding the mornings are the best. My energy level is the best in the morning after I've had a good night's sleep. So I'm four days in after treatment. And um, the first couple days were hard because I'm so stubborn that I wanted to still be able to do my normal stuff. I, I know that I knew, I knew I wasn't going to be able to tend the check-ins and do the mushrooms. Um, but I think it was, what day was it? I think it was the second day in. I had, well, the first day I had walked almost a mile with a friend um, just on the track. And I started to get dizzy. So after that, I mean, I just laid low the rest of the day. The next day in the morning, I had energy. And I said, well, I walked almost a mile yesterday. I'm going to move the chicken fence. I'm not going to be around the chicken dust. I'm just going to move the fence to help my husband. And it ended up being a ginormous project because I had to um, carry all the fencing and then the charger. And it was just a huge undertaking. And by the time that I was halfway in it, I realized that I could not do it alone. And I ended up having to be rescued. So, thankfully, I have a family that is close and, and everybody just came to help and, uh, and got me back on track. So, I'm grateful for them. Um, and then I had company. Um, the next day, uh, we watched movies. And, and I really thought that... Um, having company would make me maybe think about it less, but I think I thought about it more. And um, I started to get in my own head, and um, and it, it was it was really kind of hard. Um, but anyway, um, so today is yeah four days later, and I'm feeling a lot better. I'm gonna try to run some errands today and see how that goes. Um, I'm drinking plenty of water. I have been really regimented about taking my anti-nausea and um, a friend of mine um, who is taking Taxil as well um, said that she really wasn't having any nausea so she wasn't taking the um, anti-nausea and uh, I decided at 1 a.m. was supposed to be my next um, eight hour, you know, every eight hours I'm supposed to take, um, what is it, um, of course I can't remember. Um, I can't remember the name of it, of course, but it's awful. I hate it. Um, and, and anyway, so I did. I haven't taken it. I've missed two doses, and I feel a tiny bit spacey, but um, but nowhere near as you know constipated. I've been having stomach issues. I had stomach issues all day yesterday um, with constipation, diarrhea, all at the same time. If you can imagine that, who thought that was possible? But I did take um, an Epsom salt bath yesterday, and uh, that really helped. I read that that br brings your magnesium back up, um, and I feel like that helped me. I didn't do a hot, hot bath, as you're not supposed to really take hot baths, um, but uh, just a warm bath, and it made me feel human again. I still have my Steri strips on, and... They were actually driving me insane because they were so dirty, they are so dirty and bloody underneath from the surgery that I ended up putting a bandage over them so I didn't have to look at them anymore because it's just grossing me out so bad. And I can take those off. They said they, they want you to let them fall off, but Darren and I, my husband and I are having pictures done on Tuesday, so I'm going to take them off Tuesday, which will actually be eight days, so... They say a week, at least a week. So I'm hoping that it's healed up nicely and I don't cause any scarring by taking them off myself and not waiting them for them to fall off. 
I just don't want them on for pictures. Ugh, they're so gross. Anyway, um, so yeah, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what I'm going through and just explain to you that um, the, the whole process of, of, I don't know how to explain it. Um, breast cancer. Okay, so breast cancer, people think that breast cancer is just like this, this um, quantifiable thing, like you have breast cancer. And I always thought that, who wouldn't, you know, um, but that's not the case. One person's breast cancer is different from another person's breast cancer. The type of cancer that it is, where it's located, uh, the stage that it's at, if it's progressed and gone into the lymph nodes um, or further, uh, everybody's cancer is different. And when I first started the, this journey, I thought that if I just connected with other breast cancer um, survivors and people that were going through this, that their story would line up with mine and um, uh, I could find um, comfort in that. And what I actually found was that everybody is different. Everybody's cancer is different um, and therefore everybody's treatment is different. And everybody is physically and physiologically different. So like I am, you know, 39 years old and compared to a 70 year old woman that's been through this, you know, we're going to be different. Our cells are different. I'm, I'm, my activity level and energy level is different. So everything is different. And I actually at first found comfort in it and then um, not so much because you can't compare the stories. You are writing your own story, basically. So um, to say like, oh, well, I have this type of cancer, how come my treatment's different than this, this person's? You can't, even, you can't even do that. You have to just trust your doctors and trust that um, the chemo treatment they've put you on is um, perfect for you and just trust and have faith in the process. And it's really hard because I'm a control freak. But I'm learning, I'm growing. The Lord is growing me very, very well. Um, uh, let's see, the other thing I wanted to talk about was um, chemo versus surgery. When I originally was diagnosed with breast cancer, um, they had, my surgeon had done the biopsy times two, she had done two biopsies um, at two separate dates and she pretty much just wanted to go ahead and do surgery first uh, and I, I mean the, everything was new to me like everything so she just started talking lumpectomies and mastectomies and you know I've talked about those some um, in my other videos um, but she just wanted to go straight to the surgery. She's a surgeon. She just wanted to get the cancer out, get it gone, and then do the chemo. Um, luckily, she was going on vacation um, for a week, so I kind of had a week off, and I got to meet with my oncologist. And my oncologist, who specializes in the chemo and how to actually kill those cancer cells, that's her job, um, she gave me the option surgery first or chemo first uh, and I honestly had a hard time deciding you know part of me wanted to just get the cancer out of my body and and not on me anymore um, but the reason for waiting is that I can be treated with the chemo and monitored throughout so if they take the uh, they, they take the cancer out um, they're going to use chemo treatments on you that have worked on people in the past. So studies they've done with people that have your type of cancer, um, they're going to use that recipe for you. Or you can choose to keep the cancer in and be monitored throughout the process of the chemo. So ultrasounds, I, I assume, I mean, I haven't had an ultrasound again yet. But um, I'm, you know, I've been told by the oncologist that she will be monitoring uh, the process of the cancer, if it's shrinking, um, how quickly it's shrinking, 
um, and how it's reacting to the chemo. And if it's not working, if the chemo is not working, they're going to change the recipe. So to me, that makes way more sense. I've already proved that I'm not normal. I'm not normal. I have estrogen receptor positive cancer as well as um, HER2 positive um, cancer. So my surgeon really did not think that I was going to be HER2 positive and when the results came in, she was surprised. I'm 39 years old, that's not normal. Um, yes, I have a history of breast cancer in my family, but my mom does not have it. Um, so just all of these things are lining up to say that I am unique. We're all unique. So why would I take some recipe that worked on somebody else and use it for my body when I'm obviously not everybody else? So that's why I chose to do the chemo first. And it's totally a personal decision, totally up to you. Um, just know that you do have that option, hopefully, if your surgeon and your oncologist tell you that you do. Um, just ask, you know, have that discussion. I think it makes more sense for me. I don't like the idea of putting chemicals in my body. I hate it. Um, but if it's actually doing something, if it's actually shrinking the cancer and helping me to someday live a long life and prosper and, and all that, um, then I'll do it. But if I'm just poisoning my body thinking that it worked on everybody else, to me, that's not good enough. So just be aware that you, there may be an option for you, okay? And, um, yeah, I wish you well, and um, I'm grateful for a good day. I'm grateful to have the energy today that I do, and I know that I'm going to take a nap this afternoon because uh, it's been feeling so good when I do. So thank you for watching, and subscribe, like, share, and give me some love.